um, for service. Now what we're going to do with these first of all is we're going to trim them out and get them ready. Now what I did earlier on I will create another video video for you fairly soon in when you actually get in a full fair end of lamb. Now this is a rack of lamb this is a rack of lamb um, this is not how it arrives in okay now it comes in as a fair end of lamb and it becomes a rack of lamb after you do the prep the preparation on it now I'll go through as I said with a separate video for you in relation to how to prepare the, the lamb from becoming a fair end into a rack okay now but what I've done anyway here is to leave the remaining uh, portion of this here for you that you can actually follow through now first thing is we have removed here the shoulder blade here okay this has already been taken out here but more importantly what we want to remove here is you can see here see this here okay a lot of people leave that all right that's not correct that's bad presentation it's bad it's bad butchery and it's just bad overall now what this is is the actual fell this is the skin that sits on top of the fat of lamb okay now I'll show you what I mean by here when I actually just lift the corner with the blade here. Now you can see here, okay? That's see the way the that? Now, two ways of doing this. You can do it the slow way, all right, which is such, which is actually get, pull the fell away as you're moving down over the back of the lamb here like so. And when you get to a certain point, just get yourself a cloth, hold it down, wrap the fell, and hold down the cloth here like so. Wrap the fell in it and just pull. Now, there we go, as the fell has come off, um, there it is there, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see that we have removed this completely from the back, now what we have here, now we have something that can actually, we can work with in relation to presentation, but also we can work with in relation to um, sealing the actual back of the lamb, before the, the you know, the, this, if we had left the fell on, um, basically what would have happened when we put the, the fat down into the pan it wouldn't have sealed okay we would have been sealing the fell now we can seal the fell or seal, seal sorry seal the fat so now to trim off the rest of the lack the rack here we go in relation to we've got here we have some sinew here that needs to be removed now again guys you need to have a good sharp knife when you're doing this all right and don't you know go crazy with the actual amount of trimming that you do. You just need to remove off the actual sinew that's on the back of the lamb here. Now, again, you can see what I'm doing here. Nothing too difficult about this. Uh, I'm going to turn this over now. I'm going to trim off this part here. Again, I'm using the area of, you can see here, we've removed it cleanly off there, we haven't taken any lumps out of the meat. So, again, like so, trimming off, turn it over, let's have a look. Okay, I want to get a little bit more off underneath here, as you can see. Again guys, like I said to you, don't go over the top on this, it's not necessary. What you want to do is you just want to remove the heavy um, sinew, okay? Now, there's the sinew removed from the, the, the actual lamb itself, okay? We don't want that, okay? We're just going to get rid of that into the bin. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually clean the bones. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is, you can see here, okay, that in between the bones there is flesh, there's fat, uh, there's sinew, there's tissue, there's blood. If that is left on and that is put into the oven, this burns and makes for extremely poor presentation, okay? Um, the whole point of preparing the lamb like so is to be able to pick it up by the bone and eat it, okay, like so. So, as I said, bad presentation in relation to not cleaning the bones because all that happens is is that the bones just you protect them with foil uh, they still get burnt etc in the oven so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to clean the bones 
Now, so, take a good grip on the bone and work your blade down the bone like so, okay? And you can see here now that that bone is cleaning out in relation to any sinew that has been attached to it here. We can just cut it off. Now, this is a bit of a slow process, but again, from a presentation standpoint, it has to be done. Um, otherwise, it just becomes amateurish and very, very bad kitchen practice. So, again, so we're scraping the bones down here now like that, and we're removing all of the actual remaining rubbish that's on, this, on that bone there. Now you can see there from that bone that it is much cleaner, it um, makes for much better presentation, and again I just want to be able um, to Just to show you in relation to what I'm talking about, cleaning the bones for presentation. This, all of that came from the bones here. Now these bones have been scraped clean, they're bone dry, as you can see here. Um, these, this is proper presentation for a rack of lamb. Again, same with this one here. You can see the bones have been scraped clean, they're bone dry, there's not, there's not a screed of crap on that in relation to any fat or sinew. Again, you can see the amount of junk that came off those bones. Now that just came from these bones here. So this is what is burning when you're actually putting it into the oven, um, uncovered or anything to that effect, and uncleaned. Again, as I said, doing this, um, placing, a, cooking a rack without cleaning the bones, leaving this junk on, is makes for bad presentation. It's very unprofessional, and also as well, as I said, it makes, it, it just burns uh, turns the bone black etc and again is very very bad for presentation okay that's it guys so we're going to portion the racks out okay. now we're portioning them out into three bone sections so we're allowing three cutlets per person now obviously we're going to run out of um, a bone but we're going to have enough lamb here to actually make sure that, the, that there is a third portion here so first one as we said is here like so you just want to cut Parallel, run the knife down parallel to the bone. Okay, that is there is one portion. Next, same again. Now what we're going to do here is the same thing, parallel to the bone. As you can see there, now we have three portions. Okay, same thing here, parallel to the bone. There we go. And again, parallel to the bone here. Now, so now what I want to do is, I want to get these ready, and what I'm going to do is, we're going to put a fresh rosemary and herb crust on this, okay? So, to help us in relation to getting the crust to stick, we're going to be putting in a French mustard or Dijon paste across the back of this. So what I want to do to actually get the mustard down into the into the actual the, the flesh itself as I want to cut just barely across the skin like so turn it like so again what I'm making here for a better word is a crisscross again again and again and again and again and again like so and follow through So. Okay, that's it guys. I will bring you back when I have uh, when I'm preparing the hair crust and we'll take this to the next